Hey sports fans, welcome to the Ballers Club Press Show. Today is December 1st, 2023. And in the last week, I actually rolled 50,000 kilometers in my 2022 F-150 Tremor. So I figured this is a good day to give you guys a little update on how everything is uh, going with it. And overall, it's going pretty good. No, I guess, major problems of any kind with the vehicle, like no warranty things, although I brought it in uh, for something, which I'll tell you about. So I actually have had a couple little problems, but they're, they're super minor and I'll, I'll talk about those right now. So the first problem is sometimes in the winter when you have a sudden change in weather and it gets like from kind of mild to really cold, or sometimes if you go to the car wash, in the middle of winter and it's cold um, and this has only actually happened three times but but every time it happens it's always when there's like a weather change these two buttons for the front windows to go up and down stop working it's it's done it three times and the back windows will go up and down but you'll press these front ones and and they won't and like i said it's always after the car washer or something like that only in the winter now there is something that fixes it 100% of the time, as soon as you press this left-hand mirror button, right, all of a sudden these, no matter what, like how long you're playing with them not working, these come back to life. So three times they've stopped working and every single time I pressed that left-hand mirror button and it was like there was never a problem. So kind of minor, uh, there must be, my, my guess is, when you get those days where the weather weather suddenly changes or you're, you know, like at the car wash or something, um, there must be some frost getting on that circuit board that impedes the connection with those switches. And then all of a sudden, you know, you press the left hand mirror button and it, I don't know why that would make it come back, but it, it always does. So anyways, this is my fancy uh, seat cover I always throw on when I'm gonna be covered in sawdust. Um, the other kind of problem I've had that I did bring it in for in August and they, uh, the dealer took it for a ride and, you know, they didn't really think it was uh, a problem like I did, but I am experiencing some kind of a drive line binding. When I start from a dead stop, I get a little bit of a bump. Um, you, it's something you feel. And, and maybe here, I don't know about here, but you, you can kind of feel it. Whenever you have full traction, like nice dry pavement, and you give it gas from first gear, it, it always has a bit of a bump. And I think it's the drive line binding. I think what it is, because the Rangers kind of have this problem, the newer ones, and as does Ariane's, and it gets worse when it's hot on hers. But with me, it's just anytime I have traction, it always feels the same. The slip yoke, uh, I guess isn't lubricated enough or greased enough. So the slip yoke in the transmission for your, you know, your, your drive shaft, it's not moving enough inside the transmission or the transfer case rather. So the, the fix everyone online who's had this problem and there's not too many in F-150s, but there's more in the Rangers. They always say, if you grease that slip yoke, all of a sudden everything's perfectly smooth from a takeoff again. The dealership tried telling me that it was the tires grabbing, which I don't believe at all. And that's, that's what you're feeling. You give it gas and then like a split second later, the tires grab and then it feels like that bump. I, I, so they didn't fix anything and they said, yeah, I don't think Ford's gonna like, you know, let us, you know, take your drive shaft out and, and grease it for a warranty thing. And that's fine. I don't think it's causing any damage. It's just, it's sort of annoying to feel that bump. Um, but again, it's a pretty minor problem. And it's not like I feel the drive line binding or anything any other time. It's only during like the first gear takeoff from a stop. And then, you know, now it's slippery. So, it, you know, feel it anyways. So kind of a minor problem, I, I, but I do wish they would just grease it. I guess I could pull it out and grease it. Their reasoning is that the, the fluid in the transfer case is gonna rinse away the grease. And so I asked, okay, so does that mean if I pull the drive shaft myself, it's gonna leak the transfer case fluid? And they go, well, there might be a couple of drops. So with that logic, there must be more 
circulation, obviously, when it's running, if they think it's going to wear or wash the grease away. But in any case, everyone online seems to think that it doesn't wash the grease away. Uh, and when they have the people who were successful at getting their grease under warranty, you know, sounds like it solved the problem forever for them. But maybe they'll try a different dealership. Anyways, it's got a it's got a pretty good load in it right now, actually. I know it doesn't really look like much weight, but there's uh, big green ash rounds in the bottom there on underneath all this kind of dead stuff that I cut up just to fill the rest of the truck up. But there's, uh, I mean, you know how, if anyone who's clicking on this video knows how high a tremor is supposed to sit in the ass end, and this one's sagging a little bit. Also, uh, point of personal privilege, I got a brand new 24 inch bar for my Husky 562 XP. My whole life, I've only run chainsaws with 18 inch bars. Even on my bigger saws, like I had a bigger Husky than this, I had like a 71 cc that I only ever ran an 18 inch bar on. And it's not like I'm burying the bar in the wood, but it's nice having that extra reach. This is my first day running the 24 and I love it. It's, uh, it's a game changer for the, the firewood cutting here. So anyways, nice new bar. Ooh, and the chain is uh, 73 LGX. I got a wicked deal on LGX chain. Usually I run LPX. So the difference between the LGX and the LPX is the LPX has one more little bumper on it or something to make it slightly safer and smoother. I can't feel any difference. This LGX is supposed to be a slightly more aggressive chain. The only difference I notice is when you uh, bring the bar down on the first cut, it, it has more of a tendency to skate around instead of just digging in, like the LPX seems to just dig in better. This one skates, but once you're in the cut, it feels exactly the same. So a couple other things that have happened to me since the last uh, update with the tremor here is I did get rear-ended and all they did was they had to pull the bumper back out. It was on this side, actually. And of course, they didn't do as perfect as a, as perfect a job as Ford did getting it lined up again. But I guess that's not a big deal. They had to paint the tow hooks too because the ladies' caravan went right up underneath everything. There's actually a lot more space when there's not 1,500 pounds of weight or whatever in the back of the truck. And they painted the receiver hitch too. New, uh, cause yeah, she, she took the paint off everything there. And then, so that was a pretty minor accident. The other thing that happened kind of recently, actually about a week and a half ago is I hit a deer with this truck. Now, what had happened was I was about five minutes into my commute. It was early in the morning and, uh, I saw two deer in the ditch on the on my side of the road and i knew they were gonna cross i just knew and it was still pretty dark so i it's a super quiet rural highway so i moved over to the other lane and started slowing down because i knew they were going to run across and i just anything to buy myself some time well sure enough they ran across and i hit one of them clipped them and probably got it i don't know because nothing's broken like i even pushed on I pushed on the grill and the lights and everything to make sure nothing was moving and it wasn't. Must have only touched the steel bumper. Now, I do think it all happened so fast. I do think I remember the back legs going down momentarily, but then the deer sprang back up and ran into the bush. And uh, yeah, like I said, like zero damage. Um, and of course these Fords have a full, full steel bumper. So, you know, if it was a Chevy or something and it got clipped on the, on the corner there, you know, the other truck brands, I don't know if they have these full wrap around, you know, steel bumpers. I think they're only steel in the middle, right? And then they kind of go to plastic for the corners. But uh, I, I must have been going real slow by the time I actually hit them. Or I only hit one, actually. There was, there was two of them. I almost hit the second one. I thought I was going to. But I was going super slow already because I had slowed right down. And then the next morning, uh, same spot, same time. I saw two deer crossing the highway. No one was limping. I saw two deer cross the highway and went to the exact same spot in the ditch. And this time I saw them a little further back. And so obviously, and they didn't try to cross this time. We just waved to each other uh, as I passed. So I don't even think the deer got hurt to be honest, which is good. I don't wanna, I don't wanna kill a deer like that. I wanna kill it with a 270. 
so yeah anyways that's kind of my update on the uh the old tremor here got it nice and washed up for the video it's crazy that there's no snow for december 1st for manitoba like like there's just barely a dusting and there's no snow as soon as you get out of the bush there's no snow it's only because here the sunlight can't penetrate to melt it but yeah the uh the tremor's doing really well no problems other than that little driveline binding and the weird thing with the windows once in a while that's hardly a big deal that's like a just a thing yeah for me i don't even the window thing i wouldn't even complain about like you know if someone figures out the fix like okay maybe i would do it if it was still under warranty and all that but if i have to hit that button every once in a while after i wash the truck in the winter and to get the window to roll down it, you know no problem as long as that works the tires these are the factory tires still the general grabber atx i guess they are so now that they have some mileage on them they're starting to lose some traction in the wet and off-road and stuff so i'm probably going to pull them off this spring and we're not putting them back on that type of tire i will be going with probably 99 percent chance a goodyear angler duratrack it's what i always run that's what everyone runs up here in northern climates because all the all you guys in the south you have all these choices of tires you can run but up here we need tires with siping because the highways are ice for like you know a, a large portion of the time in the winter so we kind of need that that biting edge that the that the extra siping does and if you look at most of those cool looking mud tires like they don't have the siping so duratrax have a lot of siping so they're pretty good duratrax and uh all-terrain ko2s ko3s are coming out now i don't think you could buy ko3s just yet at the time of this recording but they're coming out on certain vehicles already if the KO3s are released, I might take a look at them. I've always preferred the Duratrax as I like the more open tread blocks in the middle because I think it throws mud better and I kind of, you know, we get into a little bit of mud here once in a while. So I, I like the aggressive sidewall, but I also like the open lugs in the middle of the tire too. So yeah, that's the only problems with the Tremor. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a pleasure to drive. I I really enjoy driving this truck. I love the power of the 3.5 EcoBoost. If I had to, if something happened with this one and, you know, like, whatever, an anvil just fell on it and it's destroyed, I would probably buy another F-150 Tremor. I would probably try to drive a 5 liter with 373 gears. I don't know if I'd want it, though. I think I would stay with the EcoBoost. And I think if you do regular oil changes and actually take care of it, your odds of getting them to last go way up. And I also think that all the cam phaser noise and everything that people think, you know, that their engine is like completely toast as soon as they start it the first time cold and they get that, that rattle for a second and a half or whatever. I'm starting to realize there's a lot of guys out there now that the trucks are getting older, they have that phaser rattle and they don't fix it. They just leave it like that. And then they'll drive like 400,000 kilometers with it like that. So there's that heavy mechanic reviews guy on YouTube. And he's always talking about someone he works with, the parts guy that is at the diesel shop that he works at. His F-150 started doing that at like 60,000 kilometers apparently. And now it has 450,000 on it. Never fixed it. So that means that for like 390,000 kilometers, every time he starts it for that two seconds or whatever, it's making the noise. And... Uh, yeah, the engine runs fine once once it has oil pressure. So even stuff like that, that people worry about so much and the transmissions being clunky and stuff. Yeah, this one's a little clunky in the low gears. Sometimes in low gears, like when you're just kind of coasting to a stop and you're going real slow and you can kind of even hear it when you step on the brake a bit, you can hear it downshift and, and bang into a lower gear. Like it is a little clunky. I mean, I guess I'd rather it didn't ever like you know be clunky but i don't think it's uh i don't think that just means it's it's broken or it's breaking uh i think that basically you know it's just clunky and it's not necessarily a sign of how long it's going to last or something i'm starting to not believe the majority of people on the internet when it comes to their trucks and 
you know, I, I think that the reason they get the warranty stuff replaced when they have these, these issues that are kind of minor that everyone seems to be dealing with, I think the reason that certain people on the internet, on forums and stuff, get their vehicles re, you know, bought back by Ford or all this warranty work done is because they're just so fucking annoying. They annoy the shit out of the dealerships. They annoy the shit out of Ford. And Ford realizes, you know what, this guy is just a fucking menace. Let's get rid of him. Let's, let's make it so he never buys another Ford again. We don't have to deal with him anymore. And they probably have the same damn problems with whatever other truck they're going to buy. So I, uh, I'm starting to not worry too much about all the crap that I read. Uh, I think that these trucks are, are pretty solid. They have some quirks. They make some weird noises. And that's just it's probably the nature of all new vehicles. I only drive Fords, but I know... You know, I know these Fords, they have a, a couple little quirks and it's not a big deal. So overall, pretty damn reliable, pretty damn tough. This truck goes a lot of places, you know, out here. It's like, these are not, uh, these are not kind to vehicle areas that I, I'm getting into here, you know, back on the other side, especially and stuff like that in the marsh out here. So yeah, they do good. I don't, I don't beat the shit out of it. I don't like off-road it recreationally like most people who buy these vehicles probably would i i'm usually i got to do something when i get there so that's my style of off-roading so i'm not pushing the envelope i guess but i'm using it and i'm hauling weight out of the bush so yeah anyways there is my update i hope someone found it useful or fun and we'll see you guys next time ballers club prez signing out